Good morning, guys. Welcome to Wednesday. And our discussion today, our training today, on innocence and shame. So we're going to keep going with the. We're, we're diving into the reclaiming of yourself and using innocence as a point of return to ourselves so that our, to see what it does to our healing. Because I've been experimenting with this personally and I've had other clients and students doing it well, finding big results and relieving their sense of shame, especially um, around mistakes, around who they are, around their feelings, around their wants and needs. And shame plays a, f a central emotional role in codependency. So we're going to be diving in that into that a bit today. Before we do that, I need to share this out to the community. And so if you're new to me, welcome. I'm Marshall Bircher, and I help codependents rediscover their happiness by helping them heal the trauma bond, discover who they are, and create healthy, happy relationships in their lives. Partly, part of the way I do that is I provide a shelter here on the internet called Thriving Beyond, the Thriving Beyond Codependency Community. And this is where you find guidance, you find shelter, you find understanding, you find a playground in which you can use to grow, grow your communication skills, conflict skills, to grow your sense of self in the experience of sharing with others, and also get the guidance and support you need to make the journey back to yourself. Because I'll tell you, and I think you know this well as well, is that this is a difficult journey. This is not something that as a walk in the park by any means. We really have to work. And it's challenging, it's scary at times, it requires big choices at times. And uh, having support, having understanding, and having a community that's got your back makes the biggest difference in that journey. So that is what the uh, community provides. The link is above on Facebook, below on YouTube. And if you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button and that bell as I upload videos several times a week. Okay, guys. Innocence and shame. So shame is one of the core emotions of codependency. Darlene Lancer, who is a, a, a well-known expert in codependency, she, she posits shame as the core emotion of codependency. It is what motivates it. Now, I tend to, to think that fear actually motivates more codependency than shame, but shame plays an enormous role in how we define ourselves. We define our identity, we define our worth, we define um, the value of our wants, needs, and feelings. And it is shame that tends to motivate the collapse of our sense of self. It tends to motivate the shedding of ourselves, the discard of who we are, so that we can keep the love, put that in quotes, the love that they give us to keep their approval, to keep some sort of connection, because for most of us, what comes with codependency is not just the abuse, but it's the neglect. It's the vacuum of attention. It's the vacuum of kindness. It's the vacuum of presence. It's the vacuum of shelter and protection that comes with that. So it's, it's that we lack these experiences because often the parent or the partner are not providing these things. And they don't want to provide them because that's an incumbent. It's an, an it's a an incumbent. It's a um, it's a burden to them. It's too much. It's it's so hard to raise you guys. To quote one of my own uh, parents, it's, it's the idea that uh, of transactionalism in the relationship. Okay, so there's two basic types of relating. There's what's called transactional relating and or benefit-centered relating and what's called connection-centered relating. So in benefit-centered relating, I do a thing to get a cookie. I get my cookie. And then I'm done with it. I'm out. But in connection-centered relating, it's about understanding and having an emotional experience together that bonds us, that builds secure attachment. Well, <laughs> if you're dealing with benefit-centered people, then you're going to have real problems when it comes down to connecting with other human beings because if you're coming towards connection they're coming from benefit they're not going to work together they're going to fracture they're going to break apart uh, because you're going at two different ideals in that experience so that is critical that is one that 
element for us to really understand here. A lot of times, children are trying to get a connection with their parent, but the parent's coming from a benefit-centered relating experience, so they don't want to spend time in presence with you, and they don't want to help you manage your emotions or connect with what you need or what you want, because that is processed as a burden to them, and so you feel shame. You internalize that as I'm there's something faulty about me. Because the big message with shame is that I am bad. The message, like with, we contrast that with guilt, is I did something bad. So guilt's more action, behavior oriented. Shame is more identity oriented. I am bad. And so codependency, the shame motivates certain kinds of behaviors, inhibits others. Like it's going to inhibit the sharing of what we think, what we feel, what we need, what we want. Really, the person of ourselves and it's going to promote absorbing them regulating them keeping them close making them happy um, it's going to promote hating ourselves turning against ourselves well in healing this shame we need to come back to a place of genuine connection with ourselves and i think innocence is a very powerful means to that connection this is what really matters to us because when we come back to connection with ourself from a place of innocence, we can see that our needs were not wrong or bad. They were not a burden. They actually didn't harm any, anybody. They intrinsically aren't harmful or a burdenship. Our feelings are not harmful. Harm, uh, feelings do not harm people. I was taught they did. What a convenient lesson to teach people, to teach me, because then I wouldn't share my feelings. Feelings actually don't harm anybody. Now that is a as a falsehood. That's just a blatant lie. And nor do needs and wants. These are natural natural experiences of being human, and they're a natural means for connection, exchange, support, belonging. They're they're kind of they they are the conduits in which we feel connected, in which we serve each other through our needs, wants, and feelings. So when we come to acknowledging our innocence in what we need and what we want and what we feel, we become largely, radically free of the shame. We start to really connect back to our genuine self and that bright, beautiful, brilliant person we truly be. And that's why I focus on it this way. Now, it is a journey there. It's, it's a practice of closing the gap between the impact of pain that we internalize as shame and returning back to a safe, secure connection with ourselves. That gap right there is the journey. That's the work I help you accomplish, is navigating this gap back to self. And part of the tool set in that is the re reclaiming of our innocence and then living from it. So today, while you're walking through your world and you're looking at things that you might feel shameful about in your past, present, or even future, give yourself a chance to explore innocence by asking yourself this question, well, who would I be if I approached this from innocence? See what you discover about yourself and about that feeling, that want, that need, or that future. Okay. Also, I want to invite you to join the Reclaiming Innocence course. It's just five modules. We start on the 18th of January. It is the launch pad into the Heal Yourself strategy, which is my core healing system for codependency, where I help you restore your sense of reality, sense of connection back to yourself, your sense of safety back into your world by helping you address attachment injury, by helping you reclaim what is real, know how, what is, how to know what is real and detect it, how to restore safety both in feeling, both in your body, both in relationships, because you've got to have it physically, emotionally, and relationally to feel secure and help you start discovering who you are. That's my master course there, the Heal Yourself Strategy. The Reclaiming Your Innocence course is going to prep you for that because it's going to give you the innocence practice. It's going to help you understand how, where, what innocence is and how it works in your world, how to reclaim it, and then how to live from it. That tool set is going to empower you to radically heal your relationship with yourself, your shame, and your identity. It's going to launch you into you, your well-being. The link is above on Facebook, below on YouTube to enroll. If you have any questions, either ask in the comments below or let me know either in the community or you can go and click the community answers link that's also 
in the description and shoot me a question and I'll be glad to answer that for you. So again, we start the 18th, so about a week and a half from now, and it also includes enrollment in the Heal Yourself strategy that starts February 22nd. My friends, lean into your innocence. Explore it. See what it reveals to you in your world and what peace it might even bring. For me, it brings a lot of peace and a lot of relief to my body. There's just a lot of peace. And um, just rest that shows up when I access my innocence. Because I've got a lot of still that shame programming and I use that to counter it. So, appreciate you. Remember that you're worth knowing, loving, and keeping. And I will see you guys in our next discussion. Have a great day and be safe out there.